just kind of throw this out here. I think the real reason why it is that somebody's upset, at least in this case here, is because the person on stage, who's a musician, by the way, is supposed to sing and perform and not talk the whole time. I mean, last I checked, John Cougar Mellencamp was a musician, not a comedian, but we got a lot to talk about. I don't know if it's when you get older, you begin to get disgruntled with the crowd that you entertain, or if it's a political mindset that changes, or if it's just, you know, just being done with it all. Either way, this right here is not exactly a good look, and it obviously went viral for a reason. Now, guys, I did a video a while back on John Cougar Mellencamp as podcast or his episode with Bill Maher. And, of course, uh, I'll try to link that episode in the description box. It was a video that got, uh, let's just say it was one of my better performing videos on this platform. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video is to talk about something else because I'm not here to talk about this from a political perspective or even a cultural perspective. It's more from a perspective of, how do I say this, are we living in an age where social media has allowed, and I mean, have they allowed athletes, performers, has it allowed these people to just feel like they can just get hostile with the paying customer? I mean, I understand that maybe there's a reason why it is that uh, this happened. Show's over. But don't worry, we will dive into the entire segment over the course of this video. And also, there's this other video out there that kind of helps explain exactly what happened. More along the lines of, uh, how do I say this? It, it comes more from the angle of uh, the paying customer itself. And I mentioned this earlier, but we're going to be talking about a little bit of all of that. But first and foremost, let's go back to what it is that could have made people turn on John Cougar or made some of his older fans or even some of his newer fans, because let's be honest, uh, rock stars who have been around for a very long time, musicians, pop stars, uh, chances are they're probably going to get a following because people, uh, and what I mean by a following is uh, not just because they perform now, but because they perform back in the day. People catch up, they look at the old music, they begin to like it. I was somebody who obviously grew up on much, much more classic rock, stuff that came out in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, even, and it's really messed up too. Somebody my age looks at stuff that comes out in the 90s, and we automatically think that it's now classic rock. I mean, hell, even some uh, even some music that came out in the early 2000s is now classified as classic rock, at least as far as people my age is concerned. And yes, I'm getting old. I understand that. The point is this right here. Regardless of how somebody may feel politically or whatnot, you have to understand they're probably going to take the opposite position that you are. I mean, most of Hollywood, most of the musicians already are all of... How is that most of them were already on the left, but people think that nowadays, because of the fact that social media exists, that these people put their views out there, after a while, people are going to boycott them and people are going to get upset with them, which also begs the question, if you didn't like this guy, why did you pay the ticket to go see the guy? Now, I could hear somebody in the comment section, a lot like what happened with the Alice Cooper video I did, where I was actually taking his side. There are going to be some people who are going to come into this video, and they're going to automatically hit the dislike button anyways, because they don't want to listen to the thing fully. Rather, they just want to listen to what I said just now and then cut it off. But I'm here to talk about the point that, hey, look, you know... Um, there's kind of both sides to blame in this situation. And I understand that obviously the paying customer is definitely more in power, but the point is this right here. At some point in time, you got to ask yourself a question. If you already don't like the musician, or if you already don't like the performing artist, then why in the hell are you paying the money to go see the person? And granted, at the exact same time, what this guy right here said also rings true as well. The stage at one of his shows, and the question is, did he deserve it? Well, let's talk about it. So apparently during Mellencamp's St. Patrick's Day concert in Ohio, he was telling a story in between songs that went on for quite a while. And some of the people in the crowd started screaming at him to stop talking and play some music. And Mellencamp shot back at them, what do you think I've been doing you blank 
Blanker. And he also went on to say, here's the thing, man, you don't know me. You don't effing know me. Hey, Joe, find this guy and let me see him after the show. And apparently after making these comments, Melon Camp went on and started playing the Authority song and another heckler started getting loud in the crowd and people were booing and Melon Camp said, well, you know what? I can stop this show right now and just that it is a ridiculous proposition. A rock concert or even a pop concert is a place you go to intentionally to get loud and make noise. It's one of the few places you're supposed to go to make noise and to get loud. And John Millen Camp's on record from a show he did in 2023 saying, quote, like, don't like people screaming from the effing audience. Well, what kind of audience do you want? They're not here to see the ballet. They're not here to go to a symphony. You're playing songs like Jack and Diane and Rain on the Scarecrow, Cherry Bomb, Pink Houses, Crumbling Down. They're anthems. They're made to get people. called Music Gurus. Now, Music Gurus obviously handles musicians. They talk about music is what they do. You go to a concert, you should be allowed to be to what? Celebrate. Dance, sing, whatnot. I mean, unless maybe you're going to like some old James Taylor or Bluegrass concert, you should obviously be allowed to celebrate, have a good time, drink or whatever. You should obviously be able to do that. And I figure somebody like John Cougar would know this. This is the same guy who did songs like R.O.C.K. in the USA. This is the same guy who did my personal favorite song from by him was the Authority song. Hurt So Good, Jack and Diane. This guy's got a list of classics that's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I grew up on people like John Cougar, Bruce Springsteen, and all of these people obviously don't exactly agree with my point of views when it comes to life or overall politicians or whatnot, but still at the same time, though, you're musicians, obviously people are still going to listen to you, and over time, you are going to develop a following, even if there are young fans who come across your music, your old music. I mean, hell, there are YouTube channels dedicated to reacting to said musicians, and their songs are old songs. It's also very interesting to see because it was at one point in time, there was this massive divide between uh, blacks and whites on the topic of rock. And now you've got a lot of uh, channels out there, mostly ran by black males and black women who are actually responding and reacting to white music. And they find it to be actually quite enjoyable. The same thing happens with whites who find hip hop, or old school hip hop to be very, very enjoyable. I've talked about the fact that in the 1990s, I also grew up listening to Tupac and Biggie Smalls and eventually developed a kind of an affinity for them, even though that was my teen years. The point is this right here. Obviously, musicians are beloved. And of course, I'm always one to point out the hypocrisy in pop culture and the hypocrisy in politics of what we're dealing with and all the crazy wokeness that we have to deal with. But the point is this right here. People are looking at this situation and thinking that maybe it's possible that the fans have turned on John Cougar, but at the same time, though, people are also looking at this situation and saying maybe John Cougar is just an old, wet, fart, nutsack Karen, and that uh, he shouldn't have turned his back on the crowd. Well, let me just go ahead and say this now. He shouldn't have turned his back on the crowd. If I had been John Cougar, I just would have simply kept on playing. Now, we'll get to the clip here in a second, but... Cougar has gotten a lot of heat from a lot of people, myself included, over this little segment from the Bill Moore podcast. Well, well, us, us white people love to have black people entertain us. I would say that the playing fields are a lot better than the cotton fields. That's what I would say about that. Maybe I'm crazy, John, but it seems like making no money as a slave picking cotton was it was not as good as playing left field for the Yankees. Well, I mean, I'm sure there were uh, you know reasons why. Listen, I mean, Dave no, Winfield no, has some no, beefs against no Steinbrenner. I'm sure. No doubt, there is one or two percent of black people in America who have a better life. Oh, stop! That's what you think? One or two percent? Okay, let's say ten percent. I'm just pulling a number out of my ass. It is out. That's where it belongs. Okay, I just pulled a number out of my ass. I know, but I'm telling you, that's that's just not true. Now, I'm not going to sit here and discuss the politics of it because I did not want this video to be full-blown political or anything like that. But I am going to say this. I disagree 100% with John Kruger, and I also disagree 100% with uh, Bill Maher. I disagree with both their takes on it, and I already did a video on that. I don't think I need to revisit that, but let's just go ahead and say this right now. If you live in the United States, chances are, regardless of what your race is, guess what? You're living way above somebody else's poverty line. Don't believe me? Go to India. Don't believe me? Go to the Middle East. Go look how people live in those areas there and then come back here and tell me that you're living poor. You're not living poor, okay? You're nowhere near as bad. You may be what they call broke, but you're not poor. We are living in a much, much more hyper-political society. It's an extremely polarized society. Now, before we look at this, I want to say this right now. 
A long time ago, The Critical Drinker is a channel I listen to quite regularly from time to time, especially when it comes to movie reviews and whatnot. I still go watch some of the movies anyways, not all of them, but still, I come to find out that a lot of times when he reviews a movie or reviews something, he's actually pretty daggone correct. He's pretty spot on. It's one of the reasons why I still subscribe to him and still listen to him from time to time. But the point is this right here. He made a video a while back talking about modern Hollywood and modern celebrities and how it was that social media has kind of been a bit of a problem for these people because, yeah, it's, it's not that often nowadays we come up here on YouTube and maybe we complain about something somebody said. I mean, God knows I made a lot of videos on LeBron James and, of course, the fact that the NBA has now got players that uh, openly attack the fans. We've also got MLB players who, by the way, are probably the most mature of the entire bunch who always get the worst amount of media scrutiny, hence Trevor Bauer once again having to come out recently and discuss this new allegation that got debunked, which, by the way, will be a video that will come out over the weekend because I don't want to go through that. And, of course, it's going to be a nice long one that's going to come out on a Saturday. But the point is this right here. Social media has given these actors, actresses, and pop stars an opportunity to voice their opinion like anybody else. The problem is that their opinions just happen to be out of touch. They don't make a lot of sense. It makes people think that you're obviously pushing an agenda or something like that. So somebody getting upset about uh, Cougar's views, who, by the way, many people would think because of where he came from in the songs he wrote and the fact that his audience was a much, much more working-class conservative base, people would probably get upset with a recent term. But then again, at the same time, it may have always been who he was. But there is one segment during this exchange he has where he goes, you don't know me, meaning that maybe it's just a certain view. Look, I'm very, very much a conservative type person, okay? Very, very much. However, at one point in time, I was very, very lenient on the topic of immigration. I'm not so lenient about it now. There are some people out there who have certain views that quite frankly don't jive with the side that they're in. I'll give you another great example using a another person who lives in Tinseltown. Use Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen is very, very much a guy on the left, very, very much a liberal. But believe it or not, he's actually overtly anti-abortion. So is Jack Nicholson. They don't believe in abortion in any case. They have personal reasons for that. The case of Martin Sheen, his wife, the mother of Charlie Sheen, Carlos Estevez, and Emilio Estevez was the result of a... You know, can't actually say the word because of YouTube's terms of services. Still, though, some people, regardless of political affiliation, they still have certain views that don't fit the mold of what their side is actually selling. That's the point of the entire situation. But of course, social media has given people a voice, and sometimes those opinions that come out are, quite frankly, not exactly jive with fan base, and some people are going to kind of let you know how they feel. Which officially brings us to the video that was leaked online. Now, guys, really quick before we go any further. I promise I'll get to it in a second. There's going to be another video like this coming out on Saturday. Or it may come out on Sunday, I'm not sure. I think the, the, the Bauer video is scheduled for Saturday. This video, The other video is scheduled for Sunday. This video here is being made on Friday, I'm, uh, Thursday. I'm trying to go ahead and just kind of like upload the content now because I've obviously got a film review that's due out on Gear 33. But before I get there, there's another one of these videos coming out that's going to be about something that happened in a church in Tennessee here recently that is going to be very controversial. But still, the point remains, when you go to a concert, you pay the ticket, you should still be allowed to basically do whatever, okay? It doesn't mean, like, expose yourself or anything, but I'm talking about, like, as far as, like, listening to music, dancing, this type of stuff, all that type of stuff you normally do at a concert. However, still, though, at the same time, though, a lot of people are looking at this and saying, what the hell happened to this guy? I shouldn't have said that, because here came that little arthritic finger right in my face, and she went, it's just like you, buddy, to be a smart aleck when I'm talking to Jesus. <laughs> and then it got real quiet. Oh. Okay, Karen. What do you think I mean to me, cocksucker? <laughs> now, the very opening of this video, I said, for the most part, that I think that what the hell was really going on here was the fact that the guy in the crowd was obviously upset with the fact that John Cougar is not exactly, how do I say, um, he's not performing what it is that he's supposed to be doing. Now, I understand that some people are going to sit here and say, look, you know, um, you know, entertainers can pretty much do whatever they want to in the bit of their show. I get that, okay? But John Cougar is a musician, and the report that we got coming out of this particular situation is that he spent most of the concert 
just talking and rambling on. Now, it's not uncommon for rock stars to do this. Uh, look, you know, I've seen old videos that used to get put out on VH1. It used to get put out. Look, MTV back in the 1980s was all about music. In the 90s, it was all about music videos, too. Then, for whatever reason, VH1 kind of overtook them when it comes to music videos and concerts and stuff. And you get these old concerts of people like, say, Bon Jovi. And, of course, uh, Motley Crue is a great example. Where John Bon Jovi or Nikki Six from Motley Crue would come out and they would just start Ran, running your mouth and start ranting for about three or four minutes. It's normal at a concert. But the report that we got on this situation was that John Cougar basically spent the entire 45, first 45 minutes of the show just going off on the microphone, not doing any performances at all. Continue. Okay, what do you think I've been doing, you cocksucker? <laughs> Now, guys, instead of playing this in the B-roll footage like I normally do, I'm putting it up in the box instead. I understand that my face may be covered, and that's obviously an editing thing that I've got going on. But still, that's also an iMovie, too. But the thing is this right here. If you watch that clip, you're probably thinking, well, when he says, you know, can't, like I said, I can't really say it here. But still, at the same time, though, let me try to run a family friendly show as best I can. It seems to me like he's just bantering back with somebody in the audience okay it's not that big of a deal i mean dude if i go to a concert and i say something and the musician that i'm seeing speaks back to me i'm probably gonna laugh even if what i said was derogatory or try to get a rise out of him i'm probably gonna laugh because yeah, this is the person you paid to see this is a icon according to what you're you know what you're thinking at the time but still, though, at the very, very end when he goes, you don't know me, it seems to me like he's trying to fight back against something that he may have actually put out there or something he may have said. Go back to the Bill Maher video. What was said about uh, only about 1.2, 1 to 2% of black people live above the poverty line. Obviously, that clip went viral. People were doing videos on it. I did a video on it, and people obviously did not take that comment very well. It may be possible that somebody got drunk in the crowd. And, of course, alcohol always brings out the uh, truth. It's the ultimate truth serum. The only two people in the world that don't lie are drunks and kids. And that right there may be the case. And John Cougar may have been on a bad night. May have been caught in a very, very bad night. Still, at the same time, though, you probably shouldn't be antagonistic towards your audience. But let's watch some more. Hey, Joe, find this guy and let me see him after the show. Anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted, um, guys, I can stop this show right now and just go on. Okay, two things. He goes, Joe, find this guy so I can talk to him after the show. Okay, let me go ahead and say this real quick. If you're thinking that the guy who's about to be pulled from the crowd has been going backstage is going to get his ass kicked by John Cougar, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, from what I understand, Cougar's had a heart attack in his life. He's not as good a physical shape. He's getting up there in age and also something else, too. He's not exactly the biggest of men. You can kind of see that right there on stage. He's not a very tall guy. Maybe security will, but I'm thinking, if anything, it might be the fact that maybe Cougar... I think it was a bad night is what it was. And I understand that these bad nights do happen. Like I said, I'm not saying this to defend him at all. Obviously, as a paying customer, you paid the ticket to go see this show. So, therefore, you don't want to be in a situation like what you're about to see here in a second. Now, when he says, I can stop this show and just get up and walk out, that right there is where we've got the problem. That right there is the real issue here. When you say something like that and tell the crowd that I'm going to be done with this show and I'm just going to walk the hell out and you're not going to get what you paid for, that right there is where Cougar is actually more so in the wrong. Let's continue. Big finger, we're totally listening. Tell you what I'm going to do. Since you've been so wonderful, I'm going to cut about 10 songs out of the show. Here we go. A little ditty, got jacked down and two magic kids go in our land. You know what? Show's over. You know what? 
Show's over. Situation could have obviously been handled a little bit better, is basically what I'm trying to say. But at the same time, though, as the person who's paying the ticket, if you don't like the person, then you know, maybe you shouldn't go. Now, let me say this right before I end the video. And I understand that this take right here is also probably going to be one of my polarizing takes, but I want to go ahead and say this. The thing about social media is this here it's not real life. However, to some people, it is. I'm not telling you to watch what you say. I'm not saying anything like that at all. God knows. I've Post on social media all the time. I got a YouTube channel. I got two of them. Plan on creating my own little network of channels. Obviously, things I'm going to say is obviously not going to be liked. I'm a big boy. I can handle that. I would tell Mr. Mellencamp the exact same thing. But then again, though, given the fact that this far as a guy who was obviously born in a different period than myself, maybe he's not used to that yet. I really truly don't know. I mean, the point is this right here. Social media like I said, is not real life. It's not really meant to be taken seriously. But if you say some very, very stupid things on social media or if you say very stupid things on a podcast, people are going to eventually hold you to account. Now, granted, 80% of your audience will probably like it. They'll probably enjoy it. They'll probably agree with you. But there's going to be a subsection out there who's not going to like it. They're not going to agree with you. And some people are obviously going to let you know how they feel about it. My thing is this right here. Maybe it's the fact that Cougar was born in a different time frame. Maybe it's the fact that Cougar's not used to social media. But obviously, the things that he puts out there on the internet are going to be held to I me. Mean, the things I say are going to be held to account. All right? It's just the way that it is. Except the difference is, mine is mostly a commentary channel that's designed to give you guys some news and tell you what the hell is, what the hell is going on and explain certain things to you. Mellencamp is doing, on the other hand, is he is responding to somebody who saw a clip of his, which I'm pretty sure that's what it was because it's the only reason why it is that somebody may get frustrated or get upset. Now, it could be other things, too. I'm not going to discount those altogether. But the point is this right here. These people paid the money to go see the show. Why not just play through it? I mean, come on, dude. I thought you were more mature than that. Still, at the same time, though, at some point in time, if you say dumb things online, guess what? People are going to get upset about it, and people are going to hold you to account. Either way, though, not a good look for Mr. Mellencamp. I just figured I'd make this video kind of react, respond to it. It's been circulating around the Internet. There's also another one that happened at a church in Tennessee this past week that I'm really going to be going hard in on, so make sure you guys stick around for that. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share the video. Please sign off in the comment section, and I'll see you guys later.